Okay, today we're going to tell you how to build a transmission for tractor pulling. Now, hopefully it'll stand up on the track, but we're going to give you some pointers on how to put it together the correct way, and it should help you out in the long run. Uh, first thing you got to do is uh, first gut the transmission completely out, take all the bearings out of it, take out just the bare case. And what we're going to do, we're going to show you where you got to clearance the transmission case for the Dodge Dart rear end right now. If you put the Dodge Carrier in, you do a little. You got to grind this off, grind this down, thin this down, and thin it down right here. And once you get that done you'll be able to put the carrier in with the ring gear on and the, the bearings off and it'll slide right in for you. And when you're doing this grinding on these cases like this with this die grinder, make sure you use eye protection. It keeps your eyes in good shape after that and you can see when you're done. So remember that. Okay, the best thing to use for grinding is a cutoff wheel is what you use in an air die grinder. It works really fast and you'll see here it'll take the material off really fast and it does a pretty good job too. <laughs> Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to show you where to clearance your case out to put like uh, the bigger gears in, or you're going to do a three-speed pulling set. First, we're going to do is take this this flashing on the grind on the casting. We're going to take this flashing down and smooth it out here and here, and over on the front side, there's the same casting there. The next thing we got to do, yeah, clearance for the bigger gear ratio, something like bigger than 21, two, three tooth in second gear and low gear. You got to clearance this off here so it clears. Now we never take this off all the way. If you use a three-speed. You clearance this down and use a, uh, a long set screw in here in neither shaft in place of the, the regular bolt for it to clear the gear. So we'll show you how this is done. Next step is to make sure you have all the gaskets removed from the transmission case and clean it up and then you're ready to reassemble it. You're going to start by putting the bearings back in the transmission case. You'll put the pinion bearing in, the top shaft bearing in. And then from there, the next step we'll do, we'll go to setting the rear end up. And we got to do the bearing preload first. That's the first step of it. So when we get done with that, we'll go on from there. So we'll see in a little bit. Okay, now that we have the transmission case cleaned up, got the bearings installed, we got the pinion bearing down here installed, and this is the top shaft bearing installed. Next step we're going to do is we're going to install the uh, carrier. In this particular situation, we're using a transmission spool, the rear end spool. And here's the spool right here. Uh, we usually leave this bearing off right here. We'll put the trans this in, the transmission first, like that. I'll slip right in. And notice we don't have the pinion because what we're going to do right now, we're going to set the bearing, uh, carrier bearing preload. So let's get that set up. We're going to put the bearings on. I'm going to bolt this cap on solid. And then we're going to set it from the other side. So we'll get back to you a little bit here. Okay, we got the carrier, or this, in this case, the spool installed inside the transmission. We got the left bearing cup tightened up tight against the face of the transmission, and there's no, no spacers on it, no shims at all. And now we're going to take the right bearing cup, and we put this onto the into the transmission. Again, no shims in it, the bearings are there. I put a, beforehand, I put a light coat of film on the, on the bearings so they'd have, so they'd rotate easy. easy. We're going to put this in here, we're going to tighten the three bolts up. Just finger tight. Try to do this evenly. And then, once we get them finger tight down evenly like that, we'll take the ratchet. And we're just going to snug these bolts down evenly until we start getting some preload in this thing here. Okay, I started to get some bearing preload now. Just starting to have a little bit of load on it. The book says you should have one to three, one one pound to three pounds of pull on these bearings. So. One to three pounds is about like this here. Once we get the uh, carrier bearing preload set, uh, what we do is a good rule of thumb to have it know if it's right or not. Just grab the ring gear, 
give it a spin, you want it to spin just by giving it a quick flick about a half a round. Anything more, anything looser than that, it's probably too loose. Anything tighter than that, it's probably too tight. But usually we look for about a half a round of spin. And uh, this seems to be really close right there. Next thing we're going to do, now we're going to measure this gap right here with some feeler gauge and see what kind of shims it's going to take to get that kind of preload. What I do is I just take a stack of feeler gauges and keep playing with it until I get, get the right fit down here. And once we figure that out, we'll measure it, put that many shims in it. Getting really close there. Okay, that seems to be a pretty good fit. Pretty good fit there. Now we'll measure it. We're getting about 66 thousandths worth of shims. So now we'll take the cup loose and we'll get 66 thousandths worth of shims out and uh, see how it fits. Okay, we went and got 66 thousandths worth of shims. Usually the feeler gauge will get you really close to what you did. Matter of fact, we put 66 thousandths worth of shims here. A little bit tight, so we did add another three and a half thousandths. Um, cup get makes shims for these things. The thickest shim is 28 thousandths, then it goes 14 thousandths, 7 thousandths, 3 and a half thousandths. That's the three different, four different shims that a cup that has. So you can just, you know, split the, split the uh, difference you need, get the preload you want. We'll snug this up and then check and see if our, our work is right now. It should be right where we need to have it. Okay, we got that snugged up. Yep, that's got a good, it's got a good fill to it. It's got about a half round of spin, so right there is the shims we're going to use later in the transmission to set the backlash. That's the total stack of shims because we know if we use all those shims that'll keep our bearing preload right whether some's on the left side some on the right side to get our backlash correctly. Okay on some transmissions when you're doing a small racial gear set on the top shaft like say a 22 top gear for third gear and smaller the big bottom gear gets bigger and bigger and right down here this nubbin here, here, here and here the gear won't hit the gear will hit it won't clear it You'll need to take a grinder and, and remove this nub and down here and here on those four spots till that gear will clear when you have the bottom shaft in. So just a pointer if you're going to put like a 20 tooth gear in third gear or something smaller, you'll need to do some grinding on there. And then if all the way down, like if you have a 16 tooth for high gear for third gear, you'll need to take that down. It'll be all the way down to the case down at the bottom. Around it, it's a pretty big circle. It's a lot of grinding, but you know, in about a half hour you have it done. Earlier we were talking about building a three-speed training and a four-speed training, but a lot of you guys will just go ahead and put just two pulling gears in. You'll take your stock second gear out and your stock third gear out and replace it with a, uh, a pulling gears. Right here is the setup of the transmission. This row of spacers and gears here is what your transmission would have in if it's stock. Then what we're going to do, what we're doing here, we're replacing this is second gear, third gear, and here's the cluster. Here's your second gear cluster. Most of them have 19 teeth on. And here's high gear. Most of them are 26 teeth. We're placed in this particular situation with a 21-23 gear set. We're going to use 21 tooth in second, 23 in high. That's a good gear set to use for like a, you know, a, a V-twin command or something like that. Works pretty good. And uh, these are the bottom gears go with it. This is a 31 tooth. There's a 21. That's 52 teeth. 29 and 23 is 52 teeth. Just got to remember, all these things add up to 52 teeth on that bottom shaft. Like this is 19. This would be a 33, 26, 26. Stock low gear is 13 teeth. That'd be a 39 tooth gear. And in stock reverse, it runs against either, but a stock reverse gear has 35 teeth. But here's how it's assembled like this. Take the pinion shaft, the rear spacer here is 695 thousandths thick. It's got a little taper there. That taper goes back against the bearing because it'll, otherwise it'll hit on the bearing cage in the case. So you put that one on, then you put your reverse either gear or your reverse gear in next on the bottom shaft. That slides on. Then you get another spacer, really similar one. This is 690 thousandths thick, but you tell it's squared edge. That goes up against this gear. Then you take your 39 tooth uh, low gear. That slips on next. Take this little spacer here. It's about uh, 300 thousandths thick in round numbers. That goes between your low gear and your second gear. Take your second gear. Always put the on these gears. Uh, the factory gear's got the radius on here, so it's easy shifting for uh, for uh, mowing lawn and stuff. The aftermarket gears that we make. We make the square edges that way you have a wider tool pulling gear and it has less chance of popping on a gear too. It stays in gear better and it's a stronger tooth that way. So next one up is you put this next wide spacer in yet. This is like an inch 310 wide. That slides on and then your low 20, your uh, 26th gear, that's a 26 tooth gear for third gear. That slides on here. There's your complete stack. Then you put this tapered spacer like this. Slide that on here. 
And then on top of that, then the bearing goes in and in top the uh, with that uh, 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 pinion holder will go there. That's what goes next. That's how the setup goes there. Now, if you're going to run a uh, other pulling gear, just stack. You're going to take it down to that far. Then you'll put your 31 on here. Put that wide spacer back on. Put your 29 in here. And you'll see it hangs over the shaft a little bit because these are thicker gears. Obviously, it's going to hang over more. But what you need to do, since these gears are thicker, you need to keep this distance from here to here all the same. So what you do is you uh, have to take it off this front spacer. You can machine this off, or otherwise, we sell these, Midwest Super Cub sells these spacers here. It's already machined down thinner, you can see side by side. This spacer here is thinner than the air spacer. It's already machined off to make up the difference. Because, just back it up here a little bit, this gear here, See the difference in thickness of gears, the aftermarket gear is a lot thicker than that stock third gear. So that's why you got to machine that spacer on. So you put that gear back on here again, and then you put the spacer on, and then that whole stack measures the same from here to here as the stock gears did. So when you put it all together, your pinion depth back here, which we'll talk about later, your pinion depth will be right on your ring gear because that's very important it's done right. Okay, okay, here's the pointer right here. Uh, a lot of you guys, this is an aftermarket top shaft that we sell. It's a harder and, and stronger shaft than the stock one. Now here's the stock shaft here over here. Once you guys are why you run these stock shafts, you have to, yeah, unless you get too much power, you can actually twist these things, and then, then you'll have problems. You won't be able to get it out of gear because the shaft's twisted. Now you see here, this gear, this is the stock gear. It slides on the stock shaft real nice. Here's our USA aftermarket gear that we sell. It slides the spline real nice. There's a, another kind of guy, another gear company out there uh, uh, out of Canada. He sells gears too. You need to watch those gears. A lot of times they don't fit on the stock spline. And uh, here's a, a gear by him, and it's on a stock shaft. And you can see this thing here, don't fit on. You beat it on, it still won't slide. And remember, this has got to slide back and forth to shift work, so that don't work very good. So, the only way you can make this thing work is by taking and grinding the, the, the spline wider so it actually slides in the shaft. So, just a word of warning, you know, the, the gear, his, gear, his gear is a little cheaper than the USA ones, but. You know, you can beat on it, pile on it, or you can just buy the USA one and voila, it falls right on. So, just a word of warning, you might want to just check, make sure what you're buying, that you, that you got good stuff. So, that's all we have for that part of it. Okay, now we're going to install the transmission, uh, put, install the gears of the transmission. And uh, here we got the pinion shaft, don't forget your uh, bearing race. We're going to put that in first, slide that through part way. Install that rear spacer the, with the chamfer on it. Put that up on the shaft like that. Put your reverse gear in. Get that start up on the spline. Next, you want to take this spacer. It looks like the same width as that one. It's about 690 thousand thick. That one on there. Put your reverse, your low gear in here. Bottom. Then we're going to put this skinny spacer in between the two gears, second and low. Then we're going to put the 31 tooth gear in next because that goes for just the 21. Put the wide spacer in, show that in the front a little better. You'll put the 29 tooth gear in here. Just kind of roll them around to get all, all the gears up on the spline. Put that on there. And then uh, we made a little fixture to go in behind that pinion, which is showing you a little bit. And then uh, we'll get that bolt up, they'll put the top shaft in. After you put that bottom shaft in the last third gear, Put this machine spacer in, you machine yourself, or you buy the one from us, uh, from Midwest Super Cup, already machined off. That gets slipped in here, and then from there, you put the uh, bearing and the race on like this here, that front bearing cup. Get that started in there, and what you do is just got to uh, uh, put that, break, that holding fixture in the back and drive this on the front. We'll show you how to do that in a little bit. Okay, we made a simple, it's a simple pinion fixture. It's a piece of uh, all thread, 3 8 all thread. Piece of half inch plate, drill a couple holes in the back that bolt onto the transmission housing back here. This tapered shaft goes in the middle of the pinion shaft. And just put these holes, I just bolt this thing on just temporary here like this. Holds that pinion in place for us. And then next we'll take the uh, Cup. We're going to stick this inside the transmission case like this. Put this bolt on temporary with two bolts just to kind of hold it in place while you bound the bearing in place. Don't forget the shims. 
A good starting place is just take the shims that you took out of the transmission, stick right back on that. We're going to check the pinion depth here in a little bit. If you do that, 95% of the time, your pinion depth will be okay when you're done. That's shoved in there now. What we do for the bearing, I just take a three quarter inch deep well socket, stick the bearing up on the shaft, put that on there like that, and just drive the bearing into the transmission. That's in all the way now. Now you can remove your bearing, your pinion holder fixture. And that part of it's done. Okay, we got the pinion in. Next we're gonna take these bolts out here that held that thing in place temporarily. And we're gonna put this pinion bearing plate on. The taper side goes to the bottom. That's made to clear the uh, front reduction housing. Just use, I use the stock two bolts in the bottom there. It's like a three quarter inch bolt. Then we use the one inch long 5 16 bolts in the top. And we'll tighten this thing down. Okay, we got that front pinion bearing plate torqued down. Next, you torque those bolts, by the way, to 20 foot-pounds. Next, we'll put the big nut on here. If you, don't have a, if you don't have an impact, tighten this down. What you do, you put the top shaft in, you put it in two separate gears at one, at one time, and then that will lock the transmission in place, and you can go ahead and tighten it down with the, with the torque wrench. The torque spec on it is 85 foot-pounds. What we do, we torque this to tight with an impact, a half-inch drive impact, and that works the best. Next thing you gotta do is stake that down. Use a staking punch. You gotta stake that nut in place so it don't back back off. Just put that on there. Give it a couple hits and that will stake that nut in place. Nut staked in place now. And then we're ready to put the top shaft in. Last time I spoke to you we were gonna put the top shaft in but before that it'll be a little easier you can do that at that time, but it'll be a little easier now to put the carrier in. We're going to put the spool in now, and we already got the shims and that stuff figured out. We just got to get the backlash set. Make sure you put a light coat of oil on those bearings before you go in there. Put that on. What we'll do again, just like last time, we'll put the left bearing cup in without any shims on, and we'll just snug it down with our fingers until we get the uh, other side put on. We'll get this thing turned to the right spot. These cups only go on one way. And usually, whatever way you go, it's the, it's the other way. Yeah. It's just bad, it's just dumb luck otherwise, you know, getting it right. Unless you mark it. If you get smarter than the machine, then you can mark it, and then you'll know where it has to be. But if you go through life in as ignorant bliss, you'll just keep turning around until you find it. Okay, we got this side finger tightened down now. Okay, now we'll take the other one, or we take these shims off that we had before, that's, that's the shims we're going to use. We're going to just take them off and set them to the side. Okay, this side, the right side, we actually marked the cup with a little X that goes on the bottom. Makes it a little quicker to get this lined up. Now we put that cup in, just like we did last time, we're going to do all the same steps basically. We're going to finger tighten these bolts down until we get the backlash right, then we'll do this measurement again. And that should get us close to what the backlash should be. The shims for the right, right amount of shims for the backlash. You hear that right there? There's some looseness in there yet. You hear it rattling. I'm just trying to start snugging this up. Tell me the backlash disappears. We like to run our transmissions with zero backlash. The book costs for three to five thousandths backlash, but you'll find tractor pulling it works better to have zero backlash in it. Keeps all that slop out of it. Tighten that set up a little bit. Try to get close to the right bearing, right, right bearing preload. And we'll start loosening this other side up to let the whole thing move over. There, now we're at, we're at right, now, right now we're at like zero backlash. You can check that real easy just by reaching here, wiggling the top shaft. You want to check that? Just go around it, make sure it's right. There, we, it's, it's, it's just a snug fit right now, so there's like zero backlash. Actually, probably just a little bit of tension on it, which is a good thing to have. 
and then uh, get that right. We're just gonna take a little bit of backlash off that, a little tension off, add, add a little more tension to it. There, that, that feels real good. And then you want to check why you got at this point. This is now we want to check your pinion, your pinion depth. If you look down there. If you look down there, you want this pinion depth. That pinion gear should be even with the ring gear. See how that pinion gear is right even with the ring gear? Right there is where you, that is a perfect set where you want that to be. You want a perfect mesh like that. If it's down, if, if the pinion gear is down below the ring gear, you're going to need to take some shims out of that shaft, out of that front spacer, so that all comes back a little bit. If it's sticking past here a little bit, you're going to take some shims and add to it to bring that out. So you want that just perfectly even like that. That will give you the correct pattern, wear pattern on here. That will help your transmission survive on the track. Now we got this set where it needs to be. Now we're going to see how much shims it's going to take. And it's going to take obviously less than what we had starting out with. We're just going to do the same thing with some feeler gauges here again. This is the thickest ones. So now we're going to drop down to two. Let's just keep. There, that one's really pretty close there. We'll check it a couple spots. A little loose there, so we know it's going to be pretty close to this measurement. We got about 36,000. So 36,000, so we'll take a 28 and a 14, that should give us about 36,000. It's about 39 right there. So we'll try the 39,000th one, and we'll see how it fits. Okay, we've got these bolts tightened down now. We have 39,000 worth of shims there, and that should get us pretty close where I think we need to be. It feels, it feels pretty good. It's got some, it's got some backlash, a little, little bit of pressure on there, but not bad. What we'll do, we'll kind of check our work now. We're going to take this bearing cup off, and we're going to put the rest of these shims on this bearing cup, tighten it down, see where we're at, and then if it feels right or feels tight, we can make an adjustment by that three and a half thousand shim from one side to the other. So we'll do that first, and we'll be right back to you. Okay, we've got the shims put in that side here, and we had left over on the other side. We're just, we're just tightening these, these, these bolts down now. Now it's got the correct bearing preload. Now we're going to check the, the drag on it, or the backlash, to see if it's about right. And see, it feels really good. Check for backlash. We have just very little backlash, maybe a thousandth of backlash. It's just barely, barely anything there. So that is all set up, ready to go pulling. So what we're gonna do now is just go through here, make sure all the bolts are torqued down tight. They should be. We'll get the torque wrench out here in a little bit because they're supposed to be torqued to 30 foot pounds. And we'll do that here, and then it'll be ready to go. Okay, we're just tightening up, tightening the bolts down. Just finishing up. So at 30 foot pounds of torque right now. We'll check the other side here quick. Okay, those are all torqued down. We're ready to go. And now we're going to rotate the transmission around and we'll go for get ready for the top thing, top shaft together. Okay, the next thing you gotta do too is when you put these aftermarket gears in, show you here, here's that stock gear set. The shift fork goes under like this in the transmission. Look here, you got that much clearance from the gear and the fork. Now the aftermarket gear set, you get a bigger gear, you're going to have trouble with clearance. See this thing here? You hear it's hitting it. It's sitting right along here. So what we're going to need to do, we need to relieve this thing. But before we do that, we're going to have to, we're going to weld a reinforcement in here. And then we'll cut and relieve it after that. That way you get uh, something to hold together. You need to put that reinforcement across here, otherwise that fork is going to bend on you in the transmission. You know, you'll have trouble with that then. So uh, we're going to... Cut a piece of steel, we're late in here, then we'll weld in, then we'll clearance it. Okay, we've got a piece of metal cut. Use like a half inch or five eighths round. We haven't used five eighths, got a lot of that sitting around here. Uh, make it an inch and a half long, and you put it right against the, where the fork goes, uh, where the shifter ball goes in there, there forward to the edge of the fork. And you gotta get off to this side here like this, because here's the shift rail and the cases right there. So you weld it in. So we're gonna weld this thing right here, and weld along there, and that way it'll make that fork nice and strong. And uh, get done with that, we'll clearance it and be ready to go.
Okay, we got that piece all laid in there. Weld it all the way around it, up to this thing too. And now we're going to take and clearance it for the gear to clear now. So just the easiest way to do that is clamp that in the vise. Get kind of high like that. Just set the gear set on there. When it turns like that, that's no good. So we need to clearance it. Get those out. We're, take a, just take, we're just going to take a cutoff wheel here. And uh, we're just going to take a grind a little bit right there. You kind of see a mark right there where it's been hitting. So we're just going to take a clearance that out a little bit. We go, I got that thing, so it just it just misses now. There's just enough clearance here, and it's hard to just see you can see the light there. See that clearance, that's what you're kind of looking for. So that way when that gear it'll, it'll rotate around. And you see why we put that reinforcement piece of steel there, because after you grind all the way, then that fork's left, so this thing here is going to carry the load of it. So next thing we do, we'll install it in the transmission, we'll show you how to do that then. Okay, next thing we do, we're going to install the top shaft. Um, this rear fork, the, rear, uh, the low, low reverse gear, this runs low in reverse. That goes on the shaft like this, this direction here. Because the fork will shift here, the back of the fork is right here because this fits down over top. This fits in that fork like this. So to make it shift right, it's got to be like that. Then, uh, then you put second and third in. This is the low reverse fork. A lot of these forks are broken. These things will break right here. This has been broken and it's been welded back together. And if you get one that's broken, you better weld it up because these, this fork here is obsolete from Cub Cadet, no longer available. So the only one you're going to have is how to use transmissions and stuff. So I suggest if you got one broken, you better weld it up and reuse it, unless you find another used train that's got a good one in. We take a lot of these trains apart, and probably about 60% or 70% of these forks are, bent, are broken. So first thing now, we're going to put the shaft in. We start with the first gear first. Be 21 and 21, 23. That's third and second. We're gonna put third gear, 23 toward third gear. Then we're gonna slip this on next, the uh, low low gear. Slip that right in here. Put that in there like that. And then this, this thing here. We've got to tap this in yet? Put the hammer here. Tap this top shaft in. Okay, that's tapped in. Now we're ready for that. That's the ready to install. There's low gear. This is reverse. This goes up for low gear. This is second gear. And this is third. So now we're going to do the forks next. Put the low reverse fork in. Goes in just like this. Show this thing through here. This thing's been welded, so it's probably going to stick when it goes through, so it's going to be a little, a little bit tighter fit than normal. But it will go on. Then we'll get that thing shoved through there. Let's see. Punch, put this like in the neutral gate. That's the second the second D10 in. There's low, there's second. There's there's the neutral gate right there. Slide this up so that's the neutral. It should, it should line up. That bolt will go right past that slot that goes in here. And uh, this bolt goes right. I'll tell you those fork here from that being. That will that lines right up with that. Turn it up a little bit. And that's where low gear's at. The second, third, slide this fork right in here. Goes down here like this. Same spot there again, same deal. There's neutral right there. That bolt lines right up with that. Bolt is on. Turns over nice and freely. All you do is, I got the one bolt right here right now, but just put these two bolts in, tighten them down, bolt your shifter on, be all ready to go. Okay, the next step is put the front cover on. We use silicone rubber instead of the stock gaskets. Silicone rubber seems to work really well. And the stock gaskets, you know, it seals up really good. Just put a little bit of silicone rubber on this. And put it on the transmission. Pop right over top of those dial pins. Like that. And tap it in there. Good. Put some bolts in there. You tighten it down, tighten it down on the, on the dial pins. Pull the dial pins first, then work. Let's get that on. Go to the air too. Okay, that's done.
next thing you have to do after that is just put the disc brake in, which is an easy fit. It should slide right top the pinion. Done. It should be slide, it should slide up and down that thing. For at least so it works. The best this is ever gonna get here. So there you go. Don't forget to put your front spacer on. Pan the big gear. Taper goes toward, toward the bearing. Okay, put your front gear on. Line it up. Bolt. Lock washer and flat washer on there. And tighten it down. You're going to use the impact on this thing because it rotates the way that it wants to loosen, so you want to make sure you get it tight. Now you got to put the, put the uh, this brake puck in. Got to clean this up yet. Put a little oil on the O-ring. Put it in there. Tap it right in. And put the front cover on. Okay, the other thing we do on these transmissions we put together on the front covers, here's the stock front cover on retouched. The front seals won't go through it. What we do, we'll take a machine that hole out to an inch and three quarter. Now that seal will pass through it so you can do a quick change pinion. Use a three inch coupler on the drive shaft, slide the coupler forward, you can pull the pinion out and replace it with a one over pinion right at the track and there's no taking the cover off or nothing and your center support bearing on your dry shaft will hold the dry shaft in place to keep the pinion from coming out the other thing we do too is take this on a sanding disc and just sand the OD the sill down so it don't fit so tight in the hole because that's what holds the bearing in that way it won't be so hard to pry the bearing out of the hole without breaking the hole because sometimes you put a bolt there and try to pry it out you'll actually break the end of the pinion off and the way to keep that is use the coupler stick the bolt in the coupler Lay the bolt out of the dry shaft, then pry the coupler and the dry and the pinion forward, it'll come loose. And then you can get out the rest of the way to take the coupler the rest of the way off. But with this way, this this won't fit, fit in there as tight. Just to be able to take a it just it just taps in real easy. And then that's where you go. You see when this when we'll put some silicone on the seals on here. But I'll show you here, all lined up, that will pass right through the hole. Okay, the last step of this transmission is to put the axles into the spool. These are the super cub spools or the fine spline axles. What you gotta do is slide the axle into the hole. You want to look down in here, once you get engaged, you want to make sure you get it lined up with the this cut here has to go right where the roll pin is. So you line up so the roll pin goes there, put the roll pin in place, then pound that roll pin down through there, it'll hold the axle right where it needs to be. Okay, that one's in all the way. Then the air axle should butt right up against this other one, and the air roll pin will go in. Let it through like that. Drive the roll pin in. And there you have it. Now you have yourself a transmission that's ready to run for the track. Axles are in. Backlash seems really good. Gear shifts work good. It'll be ready to, roll, ready to go pulling.